am presenting Union Gospel Presses Sunday School Lesson Number 6, Sunday, October 8th, 2023. The lesson is entitled, The Sin of Achan. Lesson text comes from Joshua chapter 7, verses 1 and verses 10 through 12 and 20 through 26. Related scriptures are Deuteronomy 7, 23 through 26, Joshua 7, 13 through 19, 1 Samuel 15, 1 through 31, 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10. The places are Jericho and Valley of Achor. The time is 1405 BC. This week we learn how easy it is to move away from God in times of prosperity. We have to be on guard against the sin of disobedience. The way God dealt with Achan's disobedience shows us how pregnant, repugnant sin really is to him. Today's aim, facts, to show how God led Joshua to deal with Achan's sin of disobedience. Principle, to show that our God deals sternly with disobedience in the lives of his children. Application. To illustrate that when we disobey God, there are consequences. The removal of sin is the path to restoration. Illustrating the lesson. Whether we obey or disobey God's commands is our choice. Obedience brings his blessing. Discipline, disobedience assures his discipline. Practical point one. True victory can be had only when God is obeyed fully, Joshua 7, 1. 2. Too often we blame God for our failures rather than recognize the consequences of our own and others' sin, verses 10 through 12. 3. Beware, lest you're looking, you're looking turn into coveting and your sinful coveting turn into action, verses 20 through 21. 4. Public acts of judgment should always be based on dem demonstrable facts. Verses 22 to 23. 5. Our sin always impacts us and those around us. Verses 24 through 25. 6. God's anger burns until his people fully turn from their sin. Joshua 7, 26. John 3, 36. Romans 5, 9. Golden text. Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Joshua 7.20 Today we have two lesson outlines. The first is sin committed, Joshua 7.1 and 10-12. The second is sin dealt with, Joshua 7.20-26. Introduction Douglas MacArthur wrote, once wrote, rules are mostly made to be broken and are too often for the lazy to hide behind. There is truth in that, but God's rules are always meant to be obeyed. God had given specific instructions about the destruction of Jericho, and Joshua passed them on. And yea, in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourself accursed. When ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it, Joshua 6, 18. All but Rahab and her family were to be slain and everything destroyed except for certain valuables that were to be placed in the treasury of the Lord's house, verses 17 and 19. Jericho was the first fruits of the land of, of Canaan. Could any instruction have been clearer than that? Surely there was a clear understanding of it is in everyone's mind, and there should be no problem with adhering to it. But human nature is tricky, and our hearts cannot always be trusted. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah 17, 9. Sin committed, Joshua 7, 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the accursed thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore lies thou thus upon thy face. Verse 11. 
Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded thee, commanded them, for they have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 12. Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turned their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you any more, except ye destroy the accursed thing from among you. A, tre a trespass. Joshua 7, 1. For the moment, everything looked good. It started when the walls of Jericho fell. What a victory. And everything happened just the way God said it would. Israel was on a spiritual, emotional, and military high. Taking the promised land was going to be a piece of cake. A little marching, blowing trumpets, some shouting, and every city in Canaan would be theirs. They knew it wouldn't always be easy, but they were full of confidence. If that sounds too good to be true, it was. Joshua was unaware of something that had taken place during the conquering of Jericho, and what he did not know was going to result in disaster for the Israelites. Joshua 7.1 serves as a transitional statement between the great victory over Jericho and the tragic defeat at Ai. What follows is a reminder to us of the devastating effects of disobedience to God. Here we are told that Achan committed a trespass relative to those things that were to be dedicated to God. 6.17-18 through 18. The thing that catches our attention, however, is the fact that God was angry. That statement indicates that there was, would be no doubt be some follow-up activity on his part, for his anger would have to be pacified. It is clear that even though only one man out of the entire army was at fault, God took notice, and in this case, the entire nation was going to suffer because of it. This reminds us of those words after David's adultery with Bathsheba and murder of Uriah. When the wife of Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And when the mourning was past, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. 2 Samuel eleven twenty six through 27 a revelation, Joshua 7, 10 through 11. After the victory over Jericho, Joshua immediately made plans to take the next city, Ai, as he had done with Jericho. He sent spies to learn about Ai, verse 2. They reported that this should be an easy task and that a small number of men could handle it, verse 3. 3,000 were dispatched, but they were soundly defeated and 36 of them were killed. Verse 4 through 5, Joshua tore his clothes and fell on his face before God, seeking understanding, verse 6 through 7. The thrill of victory had just been followed by the agony of defeat. This distance between a great victory and a terrible defeat is one step, and often only a short one at that. A fact of reality is that in a fallen world, we can be riding high on the cloud of some great spiritual success, and the very next moment find ourselves in the valley of spiritual failure and despair. One moment we could be like Elijah standing victoriously on Mount Carmel, and the next hiding out in a cave fearing for his life, 1 King 19.10. God responded to Joshua by telling him that lying there on his face would not solve the problem. Action on his part was required. The reason, there was sin in the camp of Israel, and it had to be dealt with. The Lord left no doubt about what he was referring to. Israel have sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them, for they should have even taken of the accursed thing, and have also stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even among their own stuff. Verse 11. This was a brisk response from the God that reveals how seriously he reviewed the transgression. It was not his fault that Israel had been defeated. It was the fault of Israel herself. Sin was present and had to be dealt with immediately. A consequence, Joshua 7.12. 
Israel was now seen by God as being under the ban spelled out in 618. And yea, in any wise keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest ye make yourselves accursed. And when ye take of the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel accursed, and trouble it. They were now accursed, that is, doomed to destruction, just as Jericho had been. No wonder they had been unable to stand against the army of Ai. God had not gone with them, and he would not do so until their sin was judged. In Joshua 6.27, we are told that the Lord was with Joshua, but now he was given the foreboding word that the Lord would not be with him until the accursed thing that was now in the midst of Israel was destroyed. Otherwise, they would be endeavoring to conquer Canaan in their own strength. Most of us have learned the hard way that we cannot fulfill God's purposes in life by relying on our own strength. Without the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us, we struggle and fail spiritually. God's standards were consistent. He had told Israel to destroy the Canaanite nations because of their wickedness. It would not be right for him to overlook and excuse the same kind of evil among his own people that had provoked him to destroy the Canaanites. How disappointing it must have been to him to see that his own children were disobedient to him, just like those heathen nations. How disappointing it must be to him today when he sees professing believers living more like the world than like children of God. Israel suffered consequences after their sin. God freely forgives sin, but often allows us to suffer the consequences brought on by it. Thank God that he is merciful, or we would suffer much more than we do. Sin dealt with. Verse 20. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. Verse 21. When I saw among the spoils of godly Babylonian garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it, verse 22. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran unto, this t into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it, verse 23. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them unto Joshua, and unto all the children of Israel, and laid them out before the Lord, verse 24. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters, and his oxen and his asses, and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them into the valley of Achor. Verse 25. And Joshua said, Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire after they had stoned them with stones. Verse 26. And they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day. So the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore, the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. A confession, Joshua 7, 20 through 21. God instructed Joshua to swift to sift through the tribes and people of Israel to find out who the culprit was who had taken the accursed thing, verses 13 through 14. The penalty was destruction by fire, verse 15. Joshua was immediately obedient beginning early the next morning, verse 16. After Achan was revealed as the perpetrator, Joshua asked for a confession of what he had done so that God would receive glory, verse 19. Achan confessed immediately, acknowledged the, acknowledging that what he had done was sin against God. He explained that he had seen a beautiful Babylonian garment, some silver and some gold. When he saw them, he coveted them and took them. He had hid all the items in his tent. While Achan answered honestly, we have no way of knowing his heart attitude about the trouble he had brought upon Israel. This might have been a case in which he was sorry he had been caught, but did not feel sincere repentance over his actions. 
it is important to notice the three critical steps of Achan's sin. He saw, he coveted, he took. It is the same downward path Eve took in the Garden of Eden. She saw the fruit of forbidden tree. It was desirable to her, and she took up it and gave some to Adam, Genesis 3, 6. Likewise, David saw Bathsheba, desired to have her, and took her. The lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, 1 John 2.16, will cause spiritual defeat when not resisted. Achan now faced the consequences of his disobedience. A discovery, Joshua 7.22-23. After Achan told him where to find the coveted articles, Joshua sent people to retrieve them. It was immediately confirmed that what Achan had said was true. Behold, it was hid in his tent. They proceeded to gather up all the items they found and took them to Joshua. Since the entire nation was affected, they were taken also unto all the children of Israel. In this case, what Achan had done had affected the entire nation, so he was accountable to all of them. This, the true facts of Achan's confession and his sin also needed to be understood by and proven to all Israel. Most important, however, was his confession to the Lord. All the things he had taken were laid out before the Lord, verse 23. The Hebrew word that has been translated laid means to pour out. This is probably deceptive of the pouring out of, descriptive of the pouring out of the silver. The idea in this is that everything was spread out before the Lord because these were things that were supposed to have been dedicated to him. God expected Joshua to be thorough in his dealing with this matter of disobedience, and indeed he was. Strong leaders should follow his example instead of trying to take an easier way out or to minimize the seriousness of the matter. Joshua's way of handling Achan's sin is instructive. We would do well to learn from his actions. First, just as Israel took time to narrow down who was at fault, we should carefully evaluate ourselves and specifically identify our guilt. Second, we should clearly express before God what we have done wrong, just as Joshua had Achan do. Third, we should get everything out in the open as Israel did, never holding back any part of the truth. It is spiritually dangerous to make a health-hearted confession. A stony, Joshua 7, 24-25. As the process continued, everyone remained involved. Joshua moved ahead with what God had told him to do, and all Israel with him participated. This probably means the head of each tribe. They took Achan, his family, his herds and flocks, his tent, everything he possessed, and everything he had stolen out to a valley that would become known as Achor, meaning trouble. There Joshua asked Achan why he had troubled Israel and said that God would now trouble him. The people then proceeded to stone Achan to death. The implication is that his family and every living thing among his possessions were included. After that, they burned everything with fire. These actions may strike us as very harsh when we consider the mercy we see emphasized in the New Testament. It is true that Jesus beautifully represented the mercy of God, but he sacrificed himself to, set, to satisfy God's holiness. In this incident with Achan, however, we see the justice and holiness of God emphasized. He had a specific purpose and plan for Israel and refused to let his people become corrupt and unable to fulfill it. The Bible instructs churches to maintain purity within their congregations by disciplining their members when they fall into sin. Thankfully, this does not involve the same kind of punishment as Joshua used. The main purpose of New Testament church discipline should always be restoration, and this will often occur when the, dis when the discipline is done in biblical way. A reminder, Joshua 7.26. After everybody and everything belonging to Achan had been stoned and burned, a great heap of stones was raised over Achan's body. This was intended to be a visible warning to everyone who saw it in the future. 
there were two results of this incident. The first thing is that the Lord turned from his anger against Israel. The removal of the one who had committed the sin satisfied him. This reminds us of the New Testament teaching that Jesus Christ is the propitiation for our sins. Romans 3.25, 1 John 2.2, 2, 4.10. Jesus satisfied God's righteous demand for payment, or pay, demand of payment for sin when he died on the cross. The second thing is that the valley received its permanent name, the Valley of Achor. The valley words for Achon and Achor were probably related. Thus, Achon, which probably means troubler, was buried in the valley of Achor, the valley of trouble. But because Israel was willing to deal with the sin problem in their midst, God's burning anger, 7-1, was turned away, and he was ready to lead them again to victory. Questions. 1. What had happened following the fall of Jericho that Joshua was not aware of? 2. What was God's reaction to this? 3. How did God respond to Joshua's plea as he was lying on his face before the Lord? 4. What was tragically different about Israel because of what occurred during Jericho's fall? 5. How was God using a consistent standard in punishing Israel's sin? 6. What did Achan tell Joshua after he was revealed as the cause of the problem? 7. What were the three steps Achan took in committing his sin? 8. How did Joshua confirm that what Achan did, what Achan told him was true? 9. What punishment did God prescribe for Achan, and who was involved in carrying it out? 10. What were the two results of Israel's punishment of Achan? This concludes the Sunday School lesson for Sunday, October 8, 2023. Thank you for listening. God bless.